Hello again folks. The rain has finally abated and I can actually do a video. Uh, the room I do this in has a metal roof so if I do it while it's raining you just hear nothing but that. But let's jump into it with a fix for our fast travel system because right now it's registering the deer, it's going to register all the animals that we're going to have. So we need to fix it a little bit. I found a better way, it's a little less clunky. So I'm going to find my player, open its blueprint. And down where we were adding everything to that array, on the begin overlap, and it adds to the enemies in range, I'm going to delete that. We don't need that no more. Up in our fast travel system, I'll delete this as well, and then get rid of that entire variable. So we don't need it no more. Instead of every time they overlap with us, we'll check what's overlapping each time we try to fast travel. So I'm going to back this up real good distance and get all actors with tag. The tag will be enemy. And then from the out actors I'll do a for each loop. And then we want to check a couple things. First, find out if it is overlapping our enemy detector. So I'll set that like that. And then we want to find out if it has another tag. So has tag, actor has tag, and this one will be alive. Because if the enemy is overlapping, that's fine if they're dead. Which sounds brutal, I like it. Uh, <laughs> but if they're alive, we don't want to be able to fast travel. But if they don't have this tag, which we'll remove from our enemy when they die, then they can. So off of the return value for the first, we'll drag off and type AND boolean so that we can compare both of these. Then we'll add a branch for the loop body and anything that is overlapping the enemy detector and has the tag of alive, I'm going to need a little extra room so I'm going to grab all this and move it back. Then we want to drag off array element and add to an array. So from true, as in both of these are true, then we will add to an array. We'll drag off and make an array, or promote it to a variable to make that array, called enemies in range. Now if, if both of these aren't true, then we will drag off and remove the item from an array. That same array. So we can just hook it up like that. Now we want to check the length of this array, and if it's at zero, then they can fast travel. So we'll drag out another one, drag off, type in length, and get equals integer equals zero. Hook that up like that. Now you don't want to hook this branch to either of these because every time it fires off it'll try to do it you want to go back to your for each loop and get the completed arrow so that after it's done every check and it's completed then it'll check the length of the array so now we need to go find our night blueprint and open it up and at the very top, off of event begin play, right after it casts to our player, we want to set tags. So actor set tags. We will drag off here and promote it to a variable called character tags. Compile. And for the default, you want to add two elements to it. So for the knights, it'll be enemy, so that we can deal damage to them. And alive. So that, you know, they're alive. <laughs> now to remove that tag, down in our damaged, at the very end, after we kill them, and we get the experience, then we want to set tags. No. We want to get tags. And we want to remove an item from it, namely that alive tag. 
the reason we're doing this this way for the set is uh, so that we can click this little eyeball and then when we place the knight in case there's some that we want to be like a, a quest like you have to kill these particular ones in order to advance a quest we can just add another tag to it from here so now he's got both tags and just so I don't get that little freaking error every single time I'm gonna drag out a patrol point and hook it up so now when we jump in huh? I'll grab my teleport try to teleport oh I can't right there's an enemy too close so boom take him down and now I can so it'll stop registering all the animals and everything too and after you kill the enemies then you can fast travel away so that's a quick fix um, another thing that I noticed one of the times I was trying to record this video is that we can jump and put our weapon away we don't want to be able to do that so in our player blueprint that is that is a mess right now hang on I'm just gonna add a few reroute nodes clean it up a little bit and you know what, it'll be fine for now I'm just gonna do that and then move it that way but let's see in our equip or sheath right here off of the can equip we want to do another and boolean and we want to check that is falling is false so I'll do and right here and go ahead and hook that to right there then we will just right click and type is fall is falling now from this one you don't want to hook it just straight to it you want to drag off type in equal and then leave this unchecked that means if the character is not falling then it will let you do what you're supposed to do so let's test that out too real quick yep as soon as I land, then I can. Can't put it away while I'm jumping. Good deal. So, now just to test one more thing real quick. Make sure that the deer aren't interfering with our ability to fast travel, which they shouldn't be now, but we'll just double check. Just to make sure. Cool, so animals don't interfere anymore. Good deal. Let's see how long we got right now. Eight minutes, we can do another little bit of stuff. Um, what was next? Oh, I know what we'll do. Right now we have it set out to where each time you harvest, these just destroy themselves. Uh, let's change that. Instead, we'll make it to where they respawn over time. So I'm going to find my green plant and edit it. This is a little bit of a mess, isn't it? But down at the very end where it says destroy actor. Let's see. Actually, right at the event interact, we want to add a branch and add a variable called harvested question mark I'll drag that out hook it in make sure it's defaulted to false and we'll hook the false to here because we don't want anything to happen if it's true way down here at the destroy actor we'll just replace this with a set harvested you can control click and grab these to move them without having to you know move everything around so I'll set that to true and then we will grab out our mesh reference and set its visibility to false then we'll right click and create a custom event and call it respawn timer and we'll just go ahead and call that function at the very end real quick now what we want to do on our respawn timer is we want to pretty much reverse this. So we'll just grab both of those. Control C, Control V. 
Oh, first we want a delay. We'll add a delay with a D and a left click. Set it for however long you want. Um, I'm going to drag this off, promote it to a variable called respawn time. I don't know why, but I like to capitalize the letters of each individual. And I'm going to tick this little eyeball so that we can adjust each one from the screen if we wanted to. I'll compile that, and I'm going to set it for a default of 30 seconds. So after the 30 seconds, then it'll set it's no longer harvested, and it's new visibility is returned. But just for testing purposes, I'm going to set it for about 5 seconds, so we can test that out real quick. So I'll find... Let's see... Interactables, harvestables, plants. I'm just gonna set another one right here. So I'll test it out. I harvested it. I can't do anything at this spot right now. Five seconds passes and it's back and I can harvest it again. Cool, so now we got respawning plants, which I'm gonna go ahead and bump that back up to 30 seconds. So now what we can do is grab all of this, control C, I'll go into my yellow plant, and just paste it in. We'll refresh nodes. If it turns red, you can just, since we brought the custom event with us, we can just refresh with a right click and refresh nodes. Um, this one we'll have to right click and you can create the variable and oh then we'll just create one more the harvested question mark and then we'll hook that like that should be the same mesh yeah it's the same name just to make sure, delete that, drag out the new one. Should be the same, but just to be safe. And hook that like that. And then at the very beginning, don't forget, we gotta add that branch. Hook the false up, and harvested. Good deal, so now we'll check both of them. Can't do nothing. There we go. It's gonna take 30 seconds. I should have adjusted the time, but. Oh, I should have adjusted the time. But if the green one comes back and the yellow one don't, then we know that it messed up. There's the green one. Attempted to access its pending kill. Oh, stupid me. Right. Right here at the destroy actor, we want to take that and remove it. And now I will adjust. Oh. Okay. And we need to set a respawn time variable for this one. Which I'll go ahead and click that as well. Now let's test it out. There it is. There it's working. And you can do the same thing for the ore. Probably wouldn't do that for the deer because that would be a little weird. We'll set them to respawn at a random location. Um, so let's do the iron ore real quick hold up where did I put that maybe not at the harvest we want to set it up to our event interact so that it just checks it from the beginning okay Compile that. Now we'll go into the ore and we'll do the same thing. Add a branch. 
harvested question mark drag out get hook to that false to the rest of it and then we'll just control V and here at the end we will hook this to here and destroy the destroy actor and we'll right click refresh that node move it up right click create that variable and we'll have to set its time so I'm gonna set it also to 30 seconds and then tick that box just in case you want to uh, it's a fern okay compile and it should apparently work let's test it as well just to make sure that with that fern it's gonna do what it's supposed to one two three four five good deal okay so just a few fixes now you can start moving those around wherever you want and the fast travel system is fixed up again our character doesn't equip while they're jumping and it's starting to come along pretty well so stay tuned for the next one and we'll start working on uh, storyline stuff getting our character actually accomplish quests maybe they'll find someone over here that needs a potion so you can gather the plants take it to them etc but thanks for stopping by